So when I say love your body as it is right now, what comes up in you? Love your body just as it is right now. It's like, oh no, Terry, you're going to start preaching that fake self-love bullshit movement on me? Most people, when I start talking about loving your body right now, today, I get met up with the ego of no. Because if I love my body as it is right now, I don't love my body as it is right now. It's fat and sick and inflamed. Like, why would I love that? And if and, and we hold on to that fear. Everyone wants to hold on to that, that neglect, disgust, rejection in hopes that it will motivate you to get your body where you want it to go. And I want you to tell me any relationship in your life in which you judge, neglect, put down, just totally despise and hate. How to tell me how that relationship goes. So, my message today is that love is not synonymous with complacency. If we love our kid, this is my daughter made up this analogy when she was like 12, okay? We were talking about this. And she's like, that would be like me saying, hey, mom, I need some new shoes. My shoes have holes in them. And what most people are looking at love, they're like that that with like body love. They think that means me being like, oh, no, sweetheart, you and your shoes are just perfect the way they are. Just accept them. And, And she's like, no, but I really need new shoes. Like they have holes in them. And I'm like, no, I love you. You're perfect. That's what people think I'm talking about when I'm talking about loving your body, that it's going to result in complacency. It's not. If you love your body and your body is struggling and needs you to show up for it, you are more likely to do that in the energy of love, a real relationship, not this rejection, I can't stand you, ooh, you're a pain in my side, gross, you look nasty, blah. How do you think, you know what? You can get there. You can get to fitness from that place. You got to have really, really deep levels of insecurity and self-hatred. But when you get to the aesthetic goal that you want, you still hate yourself. You still think you don't look good. That's why we see all these super fit people and they got like, they're literally got like a skin pool like this on their abs and they're like still trying, (laughs) still trying to get leaner, still trying to get more muscular, you know, it doesn't work on the psychological levels. So real love, real love is if your knee is messed up or you have a bunch of visceral body fat or you just whatever your body's dealing with, you've got some kind of chronic health issue. Real love is, hey, thank you for like trying so freaking hard all the time to help me operate and live and thrive. First of all, thank you. Is there anything you need? And like, listen, you'll hear stuff. It's like, I need you to exercise. And then it's up to you to not be the asshole in that relationship and be like, okay, okay, I love you. So I will show up for you. I hear you finally. I need you to stop eating dairy for a little while or gluten for a little while. Every time you eat that, it hurts really bad. But what do people get into? They get into, poor me, victim mindset. I can't have, everyone else can have gluten or dairy except me. And then you can get in this restrictive chaos mindset instead of, I hear you, body. That hurts you every single time I put that in there. So I'm going to give you other stuff so I don't keep hurting you. That's love. If you look in the mirror and you got tons of extra body fat, how about instead of, ew, nasty, which most people will equate that with, I'm nasty, I'm ew, not my body has extra body fat right now, right? So it goes straight to like self-disgust, self-hatred, self-rejection, all this bullshit. How about instead of that, you pull yourself out, become the observer and say, that's interesting. I wonder why I have so much visceral body fat on my stomach. I wonder why. Let me look into that. Maybe I should get my blood sugar checked like that Coach Tara chick says like every freaking time she goes live. (laughs) Maybe I have high cortisol or high blood sugar. Maybe I could eat other things. Maybe I could support my body and go on a journey of real self-love, which is showing up, showing up in a loving and supportive way, not in a, I'm going to hate myself fit way. I'm going to starve myself skinny because I hate this way. That shit sucks. 
Um, Jen, I agree. However, it's hard. It's so hard when you have chronic pain and you were training. Now I can barely walk on disability and spinal fusion surgery. Yes, girl. So first of all, so much love and compassion and just like in those cases, I work with all sorts of stuff, you know, hypo from, you know, that's very serious. I have worked with someone who had severe back surgery. They gained all this weight from like the steroids they put them on and all this stuff. But you, it's still the same energy of, Hey body, I see you're struggling. I'm here with you. I'm here to show up. And I believe in you. I believe in your capacity to heal and let me know what you need. Cause I'm listening and I will show up. Okay. And I hope that you have like a, a coach to, to help guide you through that, you know? Um, but yeah, that's it guys. Like when we, I know when I say love your body as it is right now, most people say, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> Cause if I do that, I'm going to stay like this and shame and guilt and fear and, and anger and chip on my shoulders. The only thing I've ever used in my entire freaking life to drive me. <laughs> How's that working? There's another way and it's understanding what love really is. And if you're a parent, then you probably know this. <laughs> I hope you know this. And it's, I love you. So I want what's best for you. And I'm here to show up and support however I can. So that's what I mean when I say, love your body. Now, sometimes loving your body is seeing what it's freaking capable of in a workout. Sometimes loving your body is sleep. Sometimes you're loving your body is giving it more nutrients. Sometimes just loving your body is doing a little intermittent fasting. But the end goal, true love is always, I want what's best for you. So I'm going to show up and support you in that. Not complacency. That's not self, self love is not, well, I'm 350 pounds and I'm insulin resistant and pushing diabetes, but I love myself like, so I'm just not going to do anything about it. That's not love. <laughs> love is showing up. Love is listening. Love is supporting nurturing. Oh man. Sorry guys. I connected to Wi-Fi at my house and I messed it all up, but that's it. I got to go. I got to run on coaching call with my clients, but just want to share that really think about what love is. And if you get in that energy with your body of what love really is, like how you are with your kids or how you would be with your kids. If you had kids, that's loving your body. It's showing up. It's supporting. It's giving it what's in its best interest, whatever that is for you and listening and building a relationship. This is so true. We need to be in 200% relationship with our bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I find it very helpful to separate your body as if it's another person from you. <laughs> That's where I start with a lot, a lot of people in the, the same practices we do with inner child work. I do with people in relationship with their body of I'm listening. What's best for you? What do you need? How can I show up for you? Wow. Thank you for all the amazing things you're doing. And if we can do that, because our bodies are not us. <laughs> this ain't going to be dead in the ground in like whoever knows how many years, right? This is going to be gone someday. So it's not me. It's not my soul. So when we look at it that way and separate ourselves and then we can see how freaking amazing it is. Like, wow, this thing's freaking sick. How can I support?